Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 in May. I hope you're doing great today. I woke up early this morning. I'm feeling full of energy and ready for a new day. Hope you're feeling the same way. Um, I decided this morning to have a cup of tea that was a little bit a uh, healthy tea. And I dug through my box of, of teas and I found one from Twinings, which I actually really loved. And I, it's my last one. It's called um, Schutz und Stark, which is in German. Um, it means strength and defense. And it's one of these defensive teas, they say, for good health. And it's got in it um, lemongrass and anise, which is a super combination because um, well, lemongrass is really good for you. And anise seed is also, I think, like a licorice um, derivative. So anyway, got my cup of uh, strength and defense tea this morning. Hope that uh, you have a coffee or a tea or something good for you. Um, it's always good to start with a strong breakfast. And um, depending on where you are in the world, you may be watching this in the evening. But it doesn't matter what time of the day you join us. I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the support that you give 60 and me. It means a lot, a lot to me and to our team. And um, we, you know, we really do try very hard to give you content that we think is going to energize you, educate, uh, inform, and um, you know, help you to shape a new way of living in your 60s. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about that today, about the perceptions of aging, because I know I often see this happen, and I'm sure you do too, where older people are just treated a little bit differently. You know, we're just given uh, more, well, for example, people, I mean, I know it's nice to offer a seat on the bus, but people do overdo it sometimes in terms of trying to be uh, helpful to you because they think you're older and not, and not capable. And of course, for, you know, obviously, forgive me for people that have disability issues and really do need help. I mean, those are putting that all aside, you know, that I think we are treated a little differently by young people. And there are stereotypes that we've talked about many times. Um, one, uh, one of our bloggers, Paul Usre, uh, raised in a great article, talks about all these different perceptions like, you know, for example, older people are worse drivers or, you know, just simple things like that that, that statistically are not true. So um, her article is about ways to change perceptions. And I, I really would like to go through this with you because I do think that we actually control uh, how people see us and uh, we can have conversations that may change their mind about us as 60 or 70 year old women. Um, and I think they people welcome it. I think that they were, because they're, gonna, they're in that state as well. I mean, if, you're, if they're 50, they're going to be 60 soon and then 70. So I think people are interested in aging uh, a new way and there's a lot of stereotypes that we hold on to ourselves that make it um, you know make it easy for people to to categorize us now one thing that she refers to is a book that we've talked about called the longevity economy by joseph coughlin and um, it's a book where he talks about you know the future is um, going to be empowered by by older people and especially women and uh, it's a very good book about the statistics around that supporting that um, uh, that of that claim but um, it's true we're better educated we're healthier we're living active lives but uh, how can we change perceptions then how can we make people think a little differently about us as 60 or 70 year old women so the first thing that pegged uh, that um, our, our author and I forgot her name Paula <laughs> Paula talks about is changing our language you know even the way that we use our language you know when people say elderly you know, an elderly person. Could you say something like, are you referring to an elder person? You know, personalize it. It's an elder person. It's not an elderly person. So, you know, there's things we can do to, not, well, it is correcting people. It's just giving them another way of talking about us. So language does matter. Elderly, it connotes, what are the words? Elderly, frail, feeble, elder, what does that say to you? Wise or respected or well-regarded. So if you say someone is elderly, you may just stop and say, oh, do you mean an elder person? And smile. And they say, oh, yeah. And just a different tone gives it a different meaning. So that's important. We must go beyond the words, however, and this is really super important um, because it's the way we act. I think it's, the, it's our, the way that we, the things we say, of course, are important. But the way that we act also has an influence on other people. 
younger generations can see us. They can see us doing things that, um, you know, that surprise them or challenge their feeling about an older person. Now, when I, I travel quite a bit, and whenever I travel, um, I, it's not that I play a game, but people always ask me sometimes, you know, how old are you? Or, you know, what, what's your, you know, um, they, they go around it in circles. And when I tell them that I'm almost 70, they actually go, oh my gosh. And they, they sometimes stop themselves about saying, oh, you don't look 70, because I think that's kind of a, you know, you're 69. You don't look that old. But that isn't what I really want them to, to, to see. I want them to see what I am doing you know, the energy that I have, the places that I'm traveling, the things that I'm doing, the curiosity that I have for the world, you know, the interest I have in what they're doing as younger people. You know, when they see you as an older person taking, um, you know, interest in them, they, they have hope. They have hope that, wow, being 60, 65, 68, whatever, is not going to be that big a deal. It's okay. Look at this person. She's doing really interesting things for, for her age, but that's okay. Um, I remember, um, well, Peg actually um, says things like, you know, you're the reason that I'm here. You know, that, I mean, that's important, I think, that, you know, we inspire younger women, you know, that they, they know that w the reason that we're here as an older woman is to inspire them. Uh, I remember when I um, went to, uh, was working in a corporate job in uh, London um, five years ago, I decided to leave and to start 60 and Me. And I started, uh, to, I talked to people, of course, about what I was planning to do. And one of my really good friends, Nicole, said to me, you know, that she really appreciated um, what I'd said. It, it really took a lot of fear about getting older off of her shoulders. And I think she's in her 30s. I mean, she's, you know, she's a very young person and she is still at her age is afraid of getting old because to her, old means you know, frail and feeble and, um, you know, sort of cutting out of society, just fading away into the sunset. And when I talked to her about the book I was going to write or about the, the website that I was going to start, the articles I was going to write, places I was going to travel and things I was going to do, she really uh, was excited about that. And many, many, many conversations later with other people has, has reinforced that, that you can be an example to younger women that um, getting old is okay. It's just, an, it really is just a number unless you make it more than that. So inspire young people. And I think what goes along with that too is we can share our love of learning. I mean, that's something that people think as you get older, you don't want to read a new book or you don't want to experiment with a new app on the phone or, or computer. And of course, there are women in their 60s and 70s who are not into technology. And for whatever reasons, that's, you know, that's their choice and it's okay. But showing a curious mind and an openness to learning new things, uh, talk about the books you've read, you know, but talk about the movies you've seen or the places that you've gone, the things you've visited. This is what 60 looks like. This is it. This is what 60, 60 looks like. And I am, you know, I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of my age. I mean, for one thing, you've lasted 60 years. I mean, gosh, that's, that's an accomplishment in itself. You've made some good choices. You've probably had some bumps. You've probably had some loss. And you maybe, you've had um, you know, disappointments and broken heart. And many times it happens. But because of that, you are interesting to younger people. I also um, I've, I've found it really uh, helpful to, to attend events where, where young people go, like, for example, a workshop or a lecture, and um, or, you know, just to go to places where young people are working and to tell them what you're doing. And in my case, I can share with them what we're doing with 60 and Me, and it excites them. This is cool. They think it's really, they, they want your, your knowledge. They want you to share. And even if you don't do a website or a blog like I do, you've still got experiences in your life that you can share with them. You know, you've, a lot of you have had training in all kinds of interesting areas. You've got qualifications. You've learned that way and also through the hard school of life knocks. <laughs> and anyway, these are good, good ways to change perceptions that women over 60 are dy dynamic and vibrant and living life with passion and purpose and making a difference. And, and you know, unless you uh, show that side to the world, they will, they will fall back on the, on the stereotypes that I mentioned earlier. Now, you can make your voices heard. This is another really important thing is that you don't give up um, <clears throat> believing in the things that are important to you. 
it's funny. I mean, I've, I've obviously, like everybody, been watching marches and, and uh, demonstrations over the last few years. And, you know, this why am I still demonstrating this stuff? I mean, a lot of older women have been out there for years and years fighting for women's rights, fighting for women's um, equality. And um, it's like, why do I still have to do this? <laughs> but you do. Things take time. History takes time to unfold. And I think that's really, really important that you don't lose your voice. Keep your voice. It's super important that we speak uh, our, our truth, speak the things that are important to us, or speak the truth. <laughs> and um, I think that's super important. We can use our power to change perceptions. We can use our language to correct and um, uplift uh, younger people who, are, who have, have, have using words in a certain way. We can stop using them ourselves. We can, you know, talk about ourselves as elder people rather than elderly person. It's really important to, to, to make that differentiation. But more importantly than telling people what we are, we have to show them what we are. And I know that this can be so challenging because there's another article I'm going to talk about about this, but it's so uh, true that we fight against being invisible. But then on the other hand, we hide. We hide ourselves because we have a fear that we're not good enough or whatever fear has that keeps us back. We have that dual want to be visible, want to be present in the world, but at the same time want to hold back. So we have to educate ourselves too about stereotypes and not um, not be fighting our own um, own ageism. <laughs> we have to be doing something against it too. So talk about it, show people what you can do, who you are, and we do have the power, in my opinion, and uh, you know, to change to change perceptions. So what do you think? What do you want other people to understand about you at this stage in your life? What are you doing yourself to change stereotypes about aging? Let's leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation. I really would be interested in this one. Uh, let me know what you think about how we, what things we can do to change perceptions. How do you think we can change perceptions about our, ourselves? So go out and have a good day. Do something today that changes the perception of an older woman and uh, have fun doing it. And I look forward to seeing you all back here again soon. But please let me know what you're doing to challenge stereotypes. Take very good care, everybody. Hope you're doing well, and uh, I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.